Okay, problem 34 is a problem of uh, 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 an airman falling from a plane, jumping out of a burning plane, falling and uh, landing in a three, three meter snow drift. Okay, uh, now you don't analyze the fall from the airplane, although the problem does give you the distance of the fall. Uh, there is no relevance to the question being asked uh, in the analysis of that fall. You can't analyze the fall anyway because the acceleration is very much non-uniform. As air resistance builds, which it will over the first 10 or so seconds, to the point where the uh, falling airman is moving at constant velocity now because air is, the air resistance is exerting an upward force that's equal to the downward force of gravity, so it doesn't speed up anymore. Uh, you can't deal with that, okay? It's not relevant to any kind of analysis we can do with the uniformly accelerated motion. Now, we made approximations up here, especially when this ball was in contact with the floor and we used uniformly accelerated motion uh, because it gave us sort of an order magnitude uh, idea. But uh, in this case, the motion is so far from being uniform, uh, the acceleration so far from being uniform, that we don't even think about doing it. Besides, you're asked how much, what's his acceleration as he falls through the snow drift? What's his average acceleration as he's brought to rest after hitting the snow drift? So none of this uh, fall occurs during the snow drift, only the part in the snow drift. So what you know is that he hits a snow drift at 53 meters per second, which is really moving 120 miles an hour or so. And he has three meters to come to rest, so that his final velocity will be zero. So those are the three things you know. And uh, we know initial and final velocity, so we can find average velocity, we can find change in velocity. We know delta S, which we put together with the average velocity to get the time interval. We could then divide the change in velocity by the time interval and get the acceleration. Of course, we could use the equations just uh, as well. Uh, but these three quantities will clearly allow us to determine the time interval and the acceleration on that three meter, or within that three meter displacement.